Hey, what's up comic and pop culture fans? This is James from Men Under Comics, and today we got on the review table the Scarecrow exclusive premium format by Sideshow. And you know what's scarier than the Scarecrow? How fast this channel has grown. Keep it growing, guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And as always, thank you so much for your support. Alright, I've had it for a few days, I've really let it marinate with me, and I think I'm ready to do the review. Uh, spoiler alert, it's really good. I am biased though, he's one of my favorite Batman villains. Um, but before we pop in the review, as always, let's do a quick history on this dude, and a required reading. Dr. Jonathan Crane, also known as the Scarecrow, was first introduced in World's Finest Comics No. 3 in 1941 in a terrible first appearance cover. Luckily, he was reprised in Detective Comics 73 and got his own cover appearance. He wasn't used again all the way until the 60s. Scarecrow is an overly obsessive, deranged, and disgraced ex-professor of psychology. Obsessed with the notion of fear, he uses drugs and psychological tactics as torture against his foes and adversaries. Since the 70s, he's been rewritten as more of a serial killer inspired by the traumas of his childhood and the excitement he gets on inflicting pain and fear in others. He's become one of the most notable and recognized villains from Batman's rogues gallery and has appeared in many popular titles such as the animated series, the video games, and my favorite Batman movie, Batman Begins from 2005, played by Cillian Murphy. Would you like to see my mask? I use it in my experiments. I'm probably not very frightening to a guy like you, but these crazies can't stand it. So when did the nut take over the nut house? They scream and they cry. This is your day now. Alright guys, I gave you a top 10 reads that you should dive into if you really want to understand Scarecrow. Uh, there's some really good stuff here. Especially this next one from the No Man's Land arc, Fear of Faith. That was a very good read. Uh, back to the 1978 one, this is the first time he becomes an actual imposing character. This is from the game, definitely worth a play. The movie's version of him was very faithful, took some of its own liberties, but was very good. Anything from Nightfall with Scarecrow is fantastic. Uh, here's a nice modern book that did very well for Scarecrow, which was nice to see. And now we're getting into my all-time favorites here, but number one goes to Year One, Scarecrow. Okay, let's start it off by talking about his base. All right, so we're gonna spin it around to the part you normally won't see that much. And guys, aside from some scene lines with the purple mist, uh, this base is near perfection. I love the grass effect here as we wind around Jason Todd's grave. But right here is the bread and butter of this piece that makes the base pop, but also the piece as a whole. Jason Todd, the second Robin who was killed by Joker in 1988, is brought back to life, kind of, as a zombie in this mirage by Scarecrow's fear toxin. So it's a hallucination if you're understanding the concept here. I love the shots of his shoes. It definitely screams Ichabod Crane, so it's going back to its roots here. I love the belt buckle on the top of it. I think they did a really good job, and it looks really scary and long, weird. I love the detail on the grave. I like that it includes the year that he was killed. I mean, this mirage of Jason coming back to life was such a win for this base, and it's just so cool. And he really looks dead with the lips curled and the eyes like that. Oh man. You really get the notion that he is a zombie here, and it just looks perfect. Love that edition of Jason Todd. It's almost like one and a half premium formats for the price of one. So we're going to go ahead and give this base a 9 out of 10. Now let's get into the sculpt, the paint, and the colors on this piece. So I like the sculpt on this 
Tom and Jason Tom three, and I think it's pretty cool. The paint choice was kind of interesting. You can see they have a hollowish, almost like green peak effect on it, which was some interesting touch. I think the fabric on the jeans or pants rather looks amazing. It really looks like a scarecrow, and I love the patches everywhere. Interestingly, in continuing the theme of him being super thin, he's actually got some abs poking out from under uh, his burlap sack there. Zoom in here for you to see that. I'm really impressed with the gloved hand. I like how it really looks like a leather, and his bones poking out there. It's really cool. The scythe is amazing. This picture does not do it justice. It looks like really rusted metal. I like the detail on the back and really all over. I like the fabric effect and the straw looks great. Now we're on to the face. This is where the money's at. Those teeth, they're like another layer under his sewn face here. It, it's just, this is a winning head sculpt, guys. This one, I don't know. This one's more of a, almost like a Tim Burton-y, boogeyman type of deal. I get it. I get what they're going for. It's just, I don't think I'll be displaying it. The colors on this base are beautiful. The colors on Scarecrow are actually a little bit muddy and brown. Still looks good, though. Like I said, there's a lot of hot points on this. They, they did a good job with the sculpting here. So because of that, I'm gonna give it the full 10 out of 10 for sculpt. And I'm gonna give it the respectable nine out of 10 for paint. When it comes to colors, like I said, it's a little weird. I wanna give it the 10 out of 10 because of these awesome purples on the base. But the actual scarecrow himself is super brown, super muddy. And because of his pose, some things can be a little hard to see. So it's like he's an eight, base is a 10. So we're gonna give the colors nine out of 10. Next up, let's talk about that design and pose. So the design on this is really unique. I thought it was really well put together and well engineered with the small exception of you need to watch the Sideshow unboxing video because this thing has to go in first before you put in Scarecrow or you might be into some trouble. I put Scarecrow in first and I, I had to take him out because this wouldn't fit in and I was scared to take it out because guys, Look how skinny this dude is. The design is well done, but it scares me. They made him so skinny. And, he, you know, he's really skinny. But it, this statue is going to make me nervous for years. There's a lot of things on this that could break. I was so happy that mine didn't. But everything fits really well into the spot it's supposed to be. Nothing's like sticking out. There's no uh, overlapping. Jason looks really good here. Super zombie-like. Uh, he fits in very nicely, and the composition of the piece works well for that. You've got a lot of good viewpoints to look at. The, the purple haze, the Jason Todd, the grave, and of course Scarecrow. Um, it goes really well. The statue has really good flow. Because of that, the design there is really strong. Um, the pose is really cool, and I like how he has his arm outstretched. It provides a nice breadth and presence to the piece. Uh, which kind of goes well with Pose as well. Uh, the only thing I could probably knock it for is, man, do you have to display this thing up high. Uh, he's looking so far down that he definitely has to be um, like chest height or, or higher, um, or else you're just not going to see the details in his face. And the head sculpt is arguably the best part about the statue, so you really want to do that. This thing does look good from multiple angles though. Like it even looks good like him going away from you. I would never display it like that, but it's nice to know that this thing looks good from all angles. I actually think it looks really good from that angle right there, but that doesn't really work for my collection. I'm gonna have to have him more head on like that. But you know, nice to know I have the option. So because of that, I'm gonna give the pose a nine out of 10. Uh, the design is actually going to be the full 10 out of 10. I'm very impressed. Next up, we get to talk about likeness and coolness. So Scarecrow is an interesting character because he's been redesigned so many times. I've seen him skinny. I've seen him normal body type looking. I've seen his face in a sack. I've seen it in a hat. I've seen it in burlap. I've, he's been in every 
different look you could possibly imagine. And I kind of like that they went for a 90s vibe. I feel like a lot of the premium formats tend to go for a 90s, 2000s look, which I think is the definitive look for a lot of these characters. So I think it was the right room. Um, I think people have forgotten how skinny Scarecrow initially was. So this is totally accurate to the comics from that time. Um, because of that, that makes me really happy. I'm a huge 90s guy. So I'm, I'm going to give the likeness already. We're just going to give it the 10 out of 10. I think they hit the nail on the head. Like I said, with the with the straw hair coming out and the hat, it's just amazing. The likeness on this doesn't do it for me. I really probably won't display it ever. Although I think it's good, better than I thought. I'm not going to display it. Um, the coolness of this piece, so when you walk in the room, are you hit by it? And you're like, wow. And I think the whole Jason Todd dead coming out of the grave is the win for this piece, which brings it to the 10 out of 10. That and maybe this awesome sight, which the detail on that is just insane. Um, because of those elements, it adds the coolness all the way up to a 10 out of 10. Just make sure the statue's up high. All right, so let's talk about proportions real quick. So this thing, it's a little bit deep. Actually, you're seeing it right now. It's, you know, that's at least a good foot there. It's actually kind of narrow, so I can squeeze it in, which I put right here next to Superman, actually. Uh, evil, Injustice Superman. Goes really well. Um, so I like the minimal footprint. There are some things you want to watch out for, as I mentioned, but um, yeah, I think they did a good job keeping that footprint in mind. The proportions are perfect. I took him. I always do this whenever I want to look at proportions. I take the dude and I put him next to a bunch of other premium formats or other quarter scales and I make sure he matches with it. And it looks like he is just about right. So we're going to actually give the proportions 10 out of 10. And lastly, guys, we're going to talk about the price. And I feel like the price for a lot of these premium formats is the same right now. Uh, 600 bucks. Not bad. I actually saw that the new Bane maquette is only, like, basically $50 more than this. So that's pretty cool. And that's, like, much bigger, a lot more material went into it. So I think their prices are starting to get better. Kudos to you, Sideshow, because you were getting a little expensive there. But it's nice to see you taking a step back to more reasonable prices. I'm really happy about that. Hopefully that doesn't sacrifice quality. I'm sure it won't. So, guys, so I think for what you get here, it's, um, you know, it's not one of the best pieces I've ever seen. But it might be a top 10. So, you know, a top 10 for 600, yeah, that's a 10 out of 10 when it comes to price. Let me spin him around here and give him the final score of... So guys, thanks for watching. I know there's starting to be like 20 Scarecrow premium format reviews on YouTube, so thanks for sticking around and watching mine. Um, I'm gonna be doing a lot more reviews, statue reviews, comic reviews, movie reviews, guest interviews, all sorts of stuff, so you guys are gonna to wanna to stay tuned. Again, there is that contest I'm gonna have uh, once we get 500 subs. So guys, stay tuned. Your support has been amazing. This has been so much fun for me. I'm not getting burned out at all, so it feels good. And um, that's my thoughts on the Scarecrow Premium Format, and thank you all for stopping by. This has been Mitt Hunter Comics, and keep on collecting.